So today we are going to talk about the the role of the orthodontist in the cleft lip and palate. This chapter and this uh, coming half an hour lecture would be addressing the general dental practitioner and the undergraduate student so that they would be able to understand the different age appropriate orthodontic treatment that have been provided to an any cleft patient at which age uh, the appropriate sequence of treatment is provided to them. So in this lecture, we are going to study about the age appropriate orthodontic treatment for the cleft patient so that as the cleft patient appear to a general dental practitioner, so general dental practitioner uh, should be able to refer the patient to appropriate specialist or to appropriate cleft center for that particular age requirement and secondly the general dental practitioner, practitioner should be able to brief and to give an outline of treatment and he should be able to understand and know the different modalities of treatment that are provided uh, to a cleft patient so uh, there is a teamwork and a lot of specialists are involved in the management of the cleft patient so um, um, i'm sure you guys are aware of the so many uh, specialists are involved as i'm divided according to the uh, age so according to the age we can divide the treatment uh, before mixed dentition and in the mixed dentition starting from the six year early permanent dentition and in the late teens so before mixed dentition we can have the treatment of uh, different uh, modalities that have been provided first of all the initial uh, management for the cleft patient is at the time of the birth at the time of the birth with the help of the latest uh, ultrasound ultrasound techniques available we have we are quite aware of this the fact that the uh, this information is usually pre present at the time of the birth that the, the, the on uh, the uh, newborn will be a cleft patient so uh, if you already know this information that the uh, the coming uh, baby would be cleft so you can do a satisfactory preparation for the newborn uh, first of all there is a lot of requirement of the psychological preparation of the parents and the uh, family for understanding the fact that this is not a very lethal uh, problem uh, but this sensitive information uh, should be disclosed in such a manner that the parents and the family is not going to abort the child. But in the latest um, uh, uh, current practice or the ethical practice is that the sonologist or this uh, ultrasound specialist do aware the um, uh, problem of the cleft to the parents and the family and they start the uh, preparation of the family in the, for the psychological preparation right uh, from the 12 weeks of the pregnancy so uh, at the time of the birth there would be no uh, trauma and we can easily develop the bonding of the mother uh, with the parents and a very important issue at the time of the birth is the uh, is the feeding feeding because uh, we need a special kind of the bottles and the feeding devices which are required at the time of the uh, at the time of the birth for easily one is the squeezable squeezable bottles these squeezable bottles are like uh, which you can press over there if you press this bottle the milk will go down and uh, these are pressable about as uh, contradicted to the hard uh, plastic bottles the other one is the uh, bottle having long nipples and these nipples directly go into the pharynx and you can squeeze the milk directly into the throat and this is another, this, this is another example of the uh, long uh, nipples so these are specialist uh, especially designed for the cleft patient moving on to the at the time of the birth the parents and the family is also referred to the different cleft association and this is also a part of the psychological preparation and understanding the fact that this is not a very rare kind of disease as is uh, quite common um, normally found in uh, in the in the Caucasian. it is found out of 701 uh, patient we have the patient of the cleft patient after the uh, after the birth management we go to the second uh, round of the treatment which is infant orthopedics many a times we have the situation like okay, the the uh, pre maxilla is too much anteriorly displaced and the cleft segment are so much uh, collapsed palatally or toward lingually that uh, the initial lip repair uh, would not be possible without the close approximation of the displaced segment. So in faint orthopedics, in the infant orthopedics, what we do, we bring the displaced segment of the premaxilla backward and we just expand the collapsed maxillary segment 
to uh, which are originally in the lingual uh, which are originally lingually displaced we just expand the we just expand the uh, segments okay and uh, and then we bring the pre maxilla backward we do this these uh, uh, with the help we do this with the help of different plates so these plates are called naso alveolar molding this is called naso alveolar because uh, they also mold the uh, base of the ala and columella as well because what you can see over there this there's this uh, base of the columella and the ala support is quite distorted so these appliances can be very helpful to provide a basic good morphological support to the very distorted uh, nose uh, which is found in the cleft lip and palate patient. So the primary objective of the infant orthopedics is to bring the very displaced pre-maxilla backward and to expand the collapsed maxillary segments laterally. And uh, the one of the reason, one of the primary objective of infant orthopedics is to uh, develop a situation by the approximation of the displaced segment uh, to get. A proper and a very neat and clean plastic surgery by the plastic surgeon. Definitely, it's so a common sense that if the segments are very much closely approximated, the result of the plastic surgery would be definitely very improved. So this is very helpful for the uh, for the ailer support uh, for the approximation of the uh, collapse uh, for the approximation of the maxillary segments, which are normally anterior displays, especially pre maxilla. However, in the current practice, sir, we will achieve all these things with one device. Yes, yes, this is the very reason which is called the nasal alveolar molding appliance. Uh, the same appliance is, is providing the support to the nose, nasal alveolar, and expanding. We just uh, add up acrylic on this side. So this is because at this particular stage, what we have because this this is we do before the lip repair and we do lip repair right. We can do lip repair after two to four weeks and onward, up to nine months, ten months, ten weeks. May we do the uh, lip repair? So this. Naso alveolar molding and the approximation of the segment are required before doing the lip repair. So we have to do it at the very early stage. How we expand and how we do it by the addition of the acrylic. And there's so many different there's so many designs of this uh, appliance. And this is the domain and specialist of this is the specialty of orthodontist. The orthodontist is support to uh, uh, provide this kind of appliance and do the nasal alveolar molding. However, the current concept and the current uh, latest um, consensus is this this uh, the, these appliances are going obsolete in the current practice of orthodontics because of the results because uh, the uh, the uh, in in some group of the uh, patient this appliance was given and in some group of the patients the other techniques for approximation of the display segment segment was used so there was uh, if we if we had compared those patient who had the nasal villa molding and those patient who had not uh, received nasal villa molding rather they have received some other kind of uh, modalities for the approximation of the displaced segment like lip adhesion and uh, uh, lip adhesions and uh, two stage two stage lip lip repair two stage lip repair mean the uh, the segments are uh, approximated by the lip repair and once they have close to uh, come when they once they have uh, come closer to each other uh, quite enough then the lip surgery is performed so lip adhesion is done before the definitive uh, lip repair and this is particularly done in extremely wide complete cleft okay then so this plate is also acting as a feeding plate as well so uh, in this in this patient you can see they have this quite apart segment so this, this pre maxilla should be brought back in order to 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 for, in order to do, to to do the very refined lip surgery so but uh, these appliance the current concept is this this these appliance can be used uh, in a very displaced segment however according to the latest evidence and cochrane review the lip adhesion and other elastic strip can also be used for the approximation of the displaced segment so that's the reason then in most of the cases the orthodontists are no lo longer used and infant infant orthopedics is going to be obsolete is is being 
uh, obsolete in the current practice in the in, especially in the uk based practice so after having the trained orthopedics we go for the uh, lip and uh, palate repair this is not the domain of orthodontics so i'm just skipping this area being a general dentist and uh, uh, undergraduate student you should be able you should be aware that the when we do the lip closure when we do the palate closure and we talk about it in full detail as well okay, the earlier we go for the uh, 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 lip repair this is more beneficial for the psychological management of the parents and the family as well because earlier we do lip repair the earlier we could get the more uh, bonding of the mother and the family with the child uh, in, in the same way the earlier we go for the palatal closure the earlier we can develop a uh, good feeding and uh, good uh, separation of the oral and nasal cavity good uh, Uh, uh development of this speech as well because after 18 months the uh, child starts speaking so and so in the initial build up of the confidence uh, the earlier we go it's the more better but the pros and cons we go for the assessment of the pros and cons of the earlier or the late surgery the earlier we do the surgery the more would be the scarring and and the more would be uh, uh, the surgery would be more technically difficult the uh, the lesser would be the age of the uh cleft child so uh, uh, and also you should be aware that the early grafting of the alveolar process is contraindicated early grafting means ki alveolar jo cleft hai usme graft at the age of at the time of the palate repair is contraindicated because of its effect on the future growth the earlier you do the more aggressive that you do the surgery of the lip or the palate the more would be the effect of the surgery by mean of the scarring on the future growth and development so coming so that's uh, the the point is this that uh, this is not to uh, uh, blame the surgery because you definitely have to do the surgery here comes the importance of the orthodontist because you have to do the surgery for the psychological reason for the development of the normal speech for the uh, separation of the oral and nasal cavity however the side effect of the surgery by mean of the scarring which is the uh, cross bite which is the anterior cross bite which is the retrusion of the maxilla being an orthodontist we do provide and manage all kind of this problem because if we go and compare the untreated cleft patient and the treated cleft patient we have the difference because in the treated cleft patient we have cross bite but in the un untreated cleft patient we do not have the cross bite the transverse bite is pretty normal in the untreated patient in the uh, treated cleft patient especially in the intrusion by the graft uh, by the alveolar bone grafting we normally found the anterior cross bite and the pre however in the untreated patient we we, we have the situation the premaxilla is anteriorly displaced so uh, if we do the surgery which is the current practice and the standard practice of our, of the management of the cleft patient we do manage all the complications of the uh, of the surgery ya sada zuban mein bolu surgeon ka gand jo hai na wo orthodontist saaf karta hai ye surgery karke jo hai na cross bite aur ye sab develop kar denge an orthodontist jo hai usko baad mein manage karta rahega in simple words so in the primary dentition period uh, if uh, what we have to do what we have to do in the primary dentition after the lip and the palate repair we we go to the speech analysis okay so speech assessment is the key area which we keep on noticing in this primary dentition phase बिकॉज इट्स प्री स्कूल चार साल के बच्चे में उम्र बच्चा जो है स्कूल जाना शुरू कर देता है अब वहां पर उसकी हाइपरिटी है तो साइकोलॉजिकल इम्पैक्ट ज्यादा हो सकते हैं हाउ एवर आई वुड अगेन से जो रिवीजन सर्जरीज हैं या जो अगेन लिप रिपेयर है या पैलेट रिपेयर है या नेजोफ्रेंजल इनसेफिशंसी को अगर आप प्री स्कूलिंग में एड्रेस करेंगे या बारह बार बार सर्जरी बार बार जीए में लेके जाने के जो साइड इफेक्ट है वो अपनी जगह वो अपनी जगह लेकिन इसके साथ साथ उन इफेक्ट के साथ साथ वो उसकी ग्रोथ को भी इम्पेयर करेगा अगर आप एक लिप रिवीजन सर्जरी करते हैं प्री स्कूल ईयर में या जो है वो पैलेट की रिवीजन सर्जरी करते हैं तो वो उसका इम्पैक्ट ना सिर्फ एक उसका बर्डन ऑफ ट्रीटमेंट है बल्कि उसका ग्रोथ एंड डेवलपमेंट के ऊपर भी जो है उसका इम्पैक्ट जाएगा कि वो उसकी ग्रोथ को इम्पेयर करेगा बाय द इफेक्ट ऑफ द स्कारिंग 
स्कार फॉर्मेशन आफ्टर द सर्जरी इसकी इसके लिए इसके ना बेसिकली आपने प्रोज एंड कॉन्स को देखना होता है अगर तो बहुत ज्यादा हाइपर नेजालिटी है यू नीड टू कंसल्ट विद द स्पीच थेरेपिस्ट वो अगर आपको स्ट्रांगली रिकमेंड करे देन प्रोसीड फॉर द सर्जरी पेरेंट्स फैमिली का प्रेशर है देन वी हैव टू गोड अदरवाइज इट्स अ बॉर्डर लाइन सिचुएशन देन ऑलवेज बी इंक्लाइन टू वर्ड अ नॉन सर्जिकल मोडेलिटी ट्रीटमेंट बिकॉज़ नॉन सर्जरी हैज द बेनिफिट ऑफ प्रिवेंटिंग ऑफ स्कारिंग and the future uh, uh, growth would be quite uh, pretty normal in the in the in the, uh, uh, primary dentition phase, in the primary dentition phase phase we do care the uh, uh, good oral hygiene because sometimes the, uh, uh, the oral hygiene may be impaired and we do need to to, to take care of the normal dentition as we do in the as we do in the standard as we do in the standard care of the uh, cleft patient so uh, in the last uh, the we go for the ent specialist ent specialist what the ent specialist would be doing if there is hypernasality then there be communication of the posterior part of the pharynx with the inner ear middle of the ear by the esophageal ear using tube to through then the ent specialist is also concerned to see any abnormality happening in this cleft patient and you know in the cleft patient you have a middle ear ke sath infection aur ye is are pretty normal in the isko hum mnemonic se quickly recall kaise karte hain anteriorly to posteriorly move karte hain anteriorly प्री स्कूलिंग ईयर में लिप रिविजन कंसीडर की जाती है अगर कोई साइकोलॉजिकल ट्रॉमा है अदरवाइज ऑलवेज बी इंक्लाइन टू वर्ड अ नॉन सर्जिकल एंड कम्प्रोमाइज इन द प्री स्कूलिंग ताकि वो जो है स्कारिंग के फैक्ट उसके कम से कम आए आगे से पीछे तरफ आते जाते हैं लिप की बात कर ली अब उसके बाद डेंटिशन आ गई डेंटिशन की हम केयर करेंगे थोड़ा और पीछे आए तो पैलेट आ गया पैलेट के रिपेयर या रिविजन जो है वो इस वजह से रिक्वायर्ड हो सकती है क्या कहीं वो वीपीआई वेलो फ्रेंजर इनसेफिशिएंसी या कोई स्पीच डिफेक्ट या कोई इस तरह तो नहीं प्रॉब्लम कर रहा तो हम उसके रिविजन सर्जरी कैन बी कंसीडर्ड एंड द प्री इन द प्री स्कूलिंग या प्राइमरी डेंटिशन पेज और पीछे मूव करते हैं तो पोस्टीरियर पार्ट ऑफ द फेरिंग्स में आ गया तो हम वहां पे ई एन टी स्पेशलिस्ट को कंसल्ट कर सकते हैं कि वहां पर कोई मिडिल ईयर इन्फेक्शन तो नहीं आ रहा और जो है वो वीपीआई या नेजो फ्रेंजल इनसेफिशिएंसी के साथ साथ हम उसकी स्पीच असेसमेंट भी कर सकते हैं एंटीरियरली पोस्टीरियरली मूव करें हम उसकी लिप्रोवियन कंसीडर कर सकते हैं पीछे आए तो उसकी डेंटिशन हमें देखना है फ्लोराइड सप्लीमेंट दे रहे हैं और थोड़ा सा पीछे मूव करते हैं पैरेट की तरफ तो जो है वो आप उसकी रिवियन पैरेटल सर्जरी कंसिडर कर सकते हैं टू इम्प्रूव द स्पीच एंड टू इम्प्रूव द हाइपर नेजेलिटी एंड बाय द फ्रेंजल ग्राफ्ट थोड़ा सा और पीछे मूव करें मेमोनिक्स में साथ याद करें तो फिर पोस्टीरियर पार्ट ऑफ द पैरिंग्स विच बी कम्युनिकेटेड विद द मिडिल ईयर सो यू कैन कंसल्ट विद द ईएनटी स्पेशलिस्ट एंड यू विल कंसल्ट द स्पीच असेसमेंट ऑफ द पेशेंट एंड दिस इज इन दिस फेज ऑफ द ट्रीटमेंट सो मूविंग ऑन टू द अदर पार्ट वी हैव लाइक इन द मिक्स्ड डेंटिशन इन द मिक्स्ड डेंटिशन इन द स्टार्ट ऑफ द मिक्स्ड डेंटिशन दिस ओनली अ टू मेजर ऑब्जेक्टिव्स वन के वी डू द एल्वियोलर बोन ग्राफ्टिंग इन द अर्ली मिक्स ट्रेंटेशन फेज अर्ली मिक्स ट्रेंटेशन क्या है छह से आठ साल या नौ साल का एज ग्रुप है जो जो उसमें टाइम है एलवेलो इसका आपने याद रखना है कि जो की एरिया जो हमने परफॉर्म करना होता है वो अर्ली मिक्स ट्रेंटेशन फेज में हमने एलवेलर बोन ग्राफ्टिंग करनी होती है तो एलवेलर बोन ग्राफ्टिंग हमने क्यों करनी होती है क्योंकि आपने एक कंटिन्यूटी डेवलप करनी होती है आपको एलर बोस की एक सपोर्ट चाहिए होती है अभी तक आपके इफ देर इज एनी ओरोफेस्टुलर और एनी कम्युनिकेशन बिटवीन दी ओर नेजर कैविटी तो वो एलवेलर बोन ग्राफ्टिंग जो है वो उसमें उसको कवर कर देगी और प्री मेक्सिला को और उस सेगमेंट अगर डिस्प्लेस्ड हुए में तो उसको स्टेबिलाइज भी कर सकती है सबसे इंपॉर्टेंट एक बात जो है वो क्या है कि ये अरप्टिंग टूथ या जो प्री जो लेटर या केनाइन है लेटरन साइज़ मोस्ट ऑफ़ द टाइम क्लेफ्ट का जो एरिया है उसमें डिस्प्लेस या कोई जेंटली मिसिंग या सिक्सटीन भी डिस्टॉर्टेड हो सकते हैं द प्राइम ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ़ द एल्वेल ब्रोन ग्राफ्टिंग इन द एर्ली मिक्स ट्रेंटेशन फेस इस टू ब्रिंग एंड टू प्रमोट द एरप्शन ऑफ़ द या तो अरप्ट नहीं करेगा या बहुत सीवियर उसकी पैरियो लॉस होगी या वो डिस्टॉर्टेड हो जाएगा उसको पाथवे ऑफ द अरप्शन मिलेगा ही नहीं ठीक है तो अब मसला क्या है कि जो प्री मैगजिला है वो डिस्टॉर्टेड हो सकता है हुआ क्या कि आपको जो इफेक्ट ऑफ द सर्जरी थी इफेक्ट ऑफ द सर्जरी की वजह से स्कारिंग हुआ बिकॉज ऑफ द स्कारिंग यू वुड बी है पैलेट 
क्रॉस वाइट होगी एंड एंटीरियर क्रॉस वाइट हो सकती है एंटीरियर एरिया जो है वो रिस्ट्रिक्टेड होगा सो वट यू हैव टू डू बींग एन ऑर्थोरॉन्टिस वट दर्थोरॉन्टिस डू एट दिस स्टेज वी डू द प्रिपरेशन ऑफ द ग्राफ्टिंग तो प्रिपरेशन ऑफ द ग्राफ्टिंग कैसे करेंगे उसको एक्सपैंड करके और इन साइजेस को अलाइन करके ताकि उस क्रेफ्ट या उस क्लेफ्ट एरिया के अंदर रूट्स या टीथ इंक्लाइन ना हो दूसरा क्या है कि जो डिफेक्ट इन दूथ नंबर फॉर्मेशन या पोजीशन जो है उसको हम असेस करके उसमें देख सकते हैं इसको मैं थोड़ा सा ड्रॉ करके देखा होता इफ देर इज द क्लेफ्ट एरिया तो इफ द टीथ आर टिप्ड इन टू द क्लेफ्ट एरिया एडजेसेंट टीथ है टिप्ड इन टू द क्लेफ्ट एरिया सो वट द प्री सर्जिकल ऑर्थोनोटिक डू दे कीप दे मूव द tilted teeth away from the cleft area to open up the space for the cleft so that the as maximum as possible as great as possible the uh, uh, bone can be packed and this bone is normally the cancellous bone and not uh, preferably is taken up from the different part of the body that you must be aware from the surgical knowledge ke iliac crest is the is, the, is a common site is a very good site for giving uh, for providing the graft so in the if if i so if i summarize in the just a minute in the, in the preparation what we do we do the expansion one expand because the alveolar uh, uh, the segment the uh, the maxillary segment have been uh, uh, because of the scarring they would be collapse so what we do in this pre pre abg pre alveolar bone grafting preparation expand the segment so as much as possible bone can be packed in this area secondly if the teeth have been like this condition and tilted into the uh, cleft area with the help of the orthodontics we align and bring the uh, tipped crown away from the cleft area and open up the space for the incision and for the management for providing the graft so this is the main objective of the pre abg alignment of the incisors and expansion of the posterior segment before the alveolar bone graft theek hai ab isme ye nahi bholna ki hum normally hum hamesha hum baat karte the ki crane ko rub karana crane ko rub karana please do uh, uh, please pay some attention to the lateral incisor as well if the lateral incisor is present and lateral incisor is going to erupt we do the alveolar bone graft just before the eruption of the lateral incisor if present if present and if it's not present then uh, before the eruption of the canine because if when the canine would be erupting through the graft it will be osteogenic this is called orthodontic osteogenesis orthodontic orthodont uh, osteogenesis kaise ki orthodontically kuch jo, jo hai wo uh, tooth eruption ke sath sath jo hai wo bone leke aa raha hai और वो नॉर्मली अरप्ट करेगा और साथ साथ जो है वो बोन लेके आता जाएगा ठीक है सो अगर हम इसके ग्राफ्ट के जो है वो बेनिफिट्स की हम बात करें तो वी कैन रिकॉल एंड हैव द मेमोनिक्स लाइक चीफ ऑफ आर्मी स्टाफ एंड सी फॉर कंटिन्यूटी और कंटिन्यूटी ऑफ द आर्ट दिस इज द मेमोनिक्स वाई वी डू द एलवेल बोन ग्राफ्टिंग वी डू द एलवेल बोन ग्राफ्टिंग फॉर द कंटिन्यूटी ऑफ द आर्ट क्योंकि इस जगह पर हम बोन ग्राफ्ट कर रहे हैं तो दिस विल डिवेलप द कंटिन्यूटी ऑफ द आर्ट सो सी फॉर कंटिन्यूटी ऑफ द आर्ट ओ फॉर ओरो एंट्रोफेस्टुला को जो है वो खत्म करेगा इफ देर इज एनी कम्युनिकेशन बिटवीन दर एन एनिकल ऑफ दर्जरी एट द टाइम ऑफ द ग्राफ्टिंग दिस कम्युनिकेशन बिटवीन दर एन एनिकटी कैन बी डिमिनिश एंड कैन बी रिमूव कमिंग टू दिलर बोर सपोर्ट वेन वी डू द ग्राफ्टिंग दिस विल डेफिनेटली बी प्रोवाइडिंग सपोर्ट टू द nose and the, the alveolar base can be supported with the help of the alveolar bone grafting as for stability this will provide a stable and a position of the premaxilla and keep it at this stage and the other very important point the eruption of the uh, eruption of the adjacent canine or lateral incisor into the graft area these are the main objectives for the alveolar bone grafting so uh, coming back to the next stage the next stage is the early permanent dentition in this permanent dentition uh, or the late or the late mixed dentition like in the age of the 11 12 13 years uh, the as per the effect of the in this particular age we have we had done the grafting in the last in the early mixed dentition and at this stage we expect that the lateral incisor or if if present and the canine Might have been erupted into the cleft area. 
ठीक है अर्ली पेमेंट इंटीशन में हम ये एक्सपेक्ट कर रहे होंगे कि क्विनाइन जो है वो ग्राफ से अरप्ट करके बाहर आ चुका हुआ है अब इस स्टेज में क्या प्रॉब्लम हो गई क्योंकि जैसे हमने सर्जरी बहुत पहले की हुई है ग्राफ अब दो तीन सर्जरीज हो चुकी हैं रिकॉल करें सबसे पहले सर्जरी जो डेफिनेट सर्जरी थी जिस जो होनी ही होनी है क्लेफ्ट में वो सबसे पहले लिप रिपेयर एज पर प्रॉफिट टू टू फोर वीक्स में या अप टू टेन वीक्स तक भी जा सकते हैं दूसरी सर्जरी थी पैलेट रिपेयर की जो 18 टू 24 मंथ्स या या आपकी जो बुक लिखी है उसमें 12 से 18 फोर 12 टू 18 मंथ्स में आपने पैलेट की रिपेयर करानी है तीसरी डेफिनेटिव सर्जरी थी वो अर्ली मिक्स कंडीशन में जो कि थी एलवेलर बोन ग्राफ्टिंग एलवेलर बोन ग्राफ्टिंग से पहले आपने क्या किया था साइजेस को अलाइन किया था और बकल सेगमेंट को एक्सपैंड किया था अच्छा इसमें जो है वो समाइम अगर बहुत ज्यादा मैगजी रिस्ट्रिक्शन है because of the scarring of the uh, anterior part of the face maxillary restriction ko 8 9 8 ya 9 saal ki age mein aap kisi tarike se theek kar sakte hain definitely we do it with the help of the face mask so face mask we are you all aware of the face mask so if there is maxillary deficiency you do it with the assessment of the uh, facial and we can do you can have help from the sphalometric analysis if the maxilla is deficient because of the scarring from the uh, cleft we can use the face mask as well uh, if 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 the maxilla is uh, retrusive relative to the rest of the face what we have uh, the, we could have a situation ki we could have cross bite because of the effect of the scarring so the posterior cross, cross bite would be present anteriorly because of the cleft and the very scar and very, very tightened anterior lip we would be having like the anterior cross bite or the uh, upper incisors would not be in a proper position and this is very difficult to procline this inside difficult because if we do procline because of the very increased tonicity and uh, uh, labial pressure by the lips uh, they will go definitely into the relapse so we could have situation in the early permanent detention we could have a cross bite and cross bite posterior cross bite and the malalignment of the incisor and the other teeth as well and other dental problems like supernumerary missing to or uh, malposition mal eruption so many problems you could have in the early preparation stage one of the very sir jo lip tonicity aapne batayi hai wo sir surgeries ki wajah se hogi unka yes, pressure to increase ho gaya hoga we will any patient any patient you google it out from the internet you would be you will see the very uh, a limited amount of the scar formation and this scar formation is the reason for increased pressure from the labial expect okay in the in the early permutation you have to to make a a few very important decision for example uh, uh, you have to make decision regarding orthodontic camouflage versus orthognathic surgery and at this stage why you do the this uh, serious decision at this stage because in both the situations you have to do the orthodontic in op, in completely in opposite direction for example if you see a patient of the cleft at the age of 12 13 early permanent detention and the maxilla is extremely retrusive then uh, with the help of the face mask face mask will not help at the age of 12 13 years because the suture would have been closed uh, the best stage the best age for the face mask you quite aware of this that the 7 8 or maximum 9 9 to 10 years so at the 12 years the result would be very minimal uh, secondly uh, uh, if you want to uh, secondly with the growth you would be expecting if you if you find and you have the patient with the very retrusive maxillary uh, uh, nasal maxillary segment at the 12 to 13 years then in the future you definitely would not be expecting the correction of the skeletal basis by the growth with the growth this problem would be magnified not is uh, and definitely not going to correct, to be corrected okay so if you have to do the surg surgical orthognathic surgery then your treatment strategy would be quite different and if you go for the camouflage for example you have like a, a pretty normal um, uh, nasal maxillary complex pretty normal soft tissue and you feel like uh, this patient is not having a severe uh, skeletal disharmony then uh, you can do the camouflage treatment so at this stage as you quite aware of this the lat the canine would have been erupted into the uh, grafted into into the graft area so you make uh, the serious decision of space closure or space opening for any missing tooth in the static zone static zone is from uh, maxillary canine to canine 
यहाँ पर अगर आपको आपको पता है बहुत सारे एरियाज में केनाइन जो है वो मिस होता है लेटरन साइजर जो है वो मिस होता है तो अगर लेटरन साइजर मिस है तो उसकी दो ही ऑप्शन सबसे बेहतर हो सकते हैं या इम्प्लांट लगाएंगे इम्प्लांट कहाँ लगाएंगे ग्राफ्ट के अंदर ग्राफ्ट में इम्प्लांट लगाना है वो तो आप सतारह अठारह साल की एज में लगाना है और ग्राफ्टेड एरिया में इम्प्लांट की जो है वो क्योंकि अब देखना पड़ेगा कि वहां पर बोन ग्राफ्ट कितना अच्छा टेकअप हो चुका हुआ है अगर तो बहुत अच्छा हुआ हुआ है तो आप डेफिनेटली इम्प्लांट इज द बेस्ट ऑप्शन अदरवाइज स्पेस क्लोरियर या स्पेस ओपनिंग ऑफ एनी मिसिंग टीथ इन द एंटीरियर स्थेटिक डोन इज टू बी कंसिडर्ड इन द अर्ली early permanent dentition uh, if you going to open up this space then uh, you can do the opening of the space other than the uh, cleft area uh, i mean i'm going i'm going to show this case so um, uh, this is quite difficult topic just keep it simple and just say this that you have to plan the closure of the space in the static zone or you have to plan the space opening for the missing tooth and the placement of the bridge denture or implant and these uh, and the variable that you see for planning the space closure and the space opening are the retrusion of the upper lip the extent of the uh, scar tissue if you are having a very scary tissue then obviously you cannot go a lot of proclination of the